A teacher asks a student, hey, can you 2A such that A is an element of the naturals? And the student says, I can't even. And the teacher goes, I bet you can. If you did get it and it wasn't funny, that's okay. If you didn't get it, I promise it was very funny. And we're gonna explain it right now in such detail that it may not be funny by the time I get done, but I promise you, it was very, very funny. This is written in set builder notation. Set builder notation is pretty common, but it has a whole lot of different pieces to it. I personally only use a couple of easy to understand ones, which I'm gonna talk about right now. I break it up into two major chunks, the form and the rules. In this case, the form is 2a, which means that any element of this set is gonna look like a times two. Well, what's A? That brings us to the rules. The rule here is that A is an element of the natural numbers, meaning that A is any, and in fact will eventually be all, of the natural numbers themselves. So let's read this. That N stands for the entire set of natural numbers. And that suspiciously E looking thing is called, is an element of. Or rather, that's just what you read it as. So to read this aloud, we would say A is an element of the naturals. So, for example, if we let a take on these values right here, and we plug them in, that is to say multiplying them by 2, we essentially get these numbers right below it. And those are all even numbers. It makes sense. Now why did I talk about it in this particular way? Well, the reason is because there was a particular set in my last two videos that I've used that may have confused some people. Here it is here, it's the definition for the quotients. And it's pretty involved looking, so let's break it down really quickly. As you can see from the form, it takes two numbers, a and b, to make a single element of a quotient. That's because the elements themselves are fractions, which involves two numbers. Now we just need to figure out what kind of things we want a and b to be. It's kind of hard to say, but that's essentially the idea. Now as a quick review, z stands for the German word Zollen, and in this case, this z here is to represent the integers, the set of all positive and negative numbers, including zero. This here means that a and b are both some integer. We also need to exclude that b is zero, and so we say b can't be zero. The reason again is that we can't divide by zero. And the reason this is useful is because there isn't really a convenient way of listing these things out. Yes, there is a way of doing it, but it's very cumbersome and doesn't make nearly as much intuitive sense as the set builder notation version. And that's basically all you need to know right now for set builder notation. There's more to it, but we're not going to need much more to get through most of the Taylor series. So I've got a video planned for March. It'll be a little behind schedule, but not too far. Um, I know there was a tiny little break that I had to take there because, well, some of my family got sick and I'm a dad. So yeah, you know how that works. Anyhow, thanks for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Adieu. See, I say adieu at the end of these videos. I don't say adieu at the end of my... What am I gonna say? I don't have like an outro. These thoughts have consumed me.